confirm the number with your partner. I see lots of hands, so I'm going to use our sticks. And what do you, what does your partner think? Sixteen. Sixteen. Do you agree with your partner? Does anybody have a different answer than sixteen? Seventeen. Seventeen. Does anyone have a different answer? Okay. All right. Looks like the total number is sixteen. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Flat. Okay. Four. So remember, we're trying to figure out how many dots are under the splats. Because the colors are the same, it tells us what? That the, the numbers, the numbers are, are the same. The same under the splat. Okay? So we're trying to figure out how many shapes are under each splat and how do you know? So figure it out in your head and talk with your partner. Okay. Do you have an answer? Okay, let's come back together in five. Ready to learn in four. With our answers in three. So nice. Um, are you ready to share? Yes. Okay. So how many do you think are underneath each splat and how do you know? Six. You think there's six underneath each one? How do you know? Can you ask somebody in your group? How do we know there's six underneath? Uh, um, I know that there's six underneath because um, so I counted in like six and six, so that would equal twelve. And I tried to find out like twelve plus four was it sixteen? And I got the answer sixteen. Okay, so I heard you used uh, an equation six plus six plus 4 gives me 16. Did somebody else do a different equation? What did you do? So we did 16 minus 4 equals 12 and then that minus 6. 12 minus 6 gave you what? 6. 6 and then 6 minus... Uh, did you stop there? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else do something different? Um, what I did was, so I saw the four, and then um, I counted up until I um, hit 16. So I was like, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and I got 12. So then I separated 12 into um, groups, and then I got six in each group. Okay, can you use your talking stems, please? Does anybody have any questions? Um, I like how you first like you count it up to sixteen, then like you put them into groups. Thank you. Um, I really like it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. She asked, "Does anybody have any questions?" Do you notice that um, you used um, division in your problem? No. So when you said you split 12 into two groups, that's pretty much division. It's 12 divided by two groups. So um, then there's a six in each group. Thank you for putting that out for me. Yes. Okay. So how else could you know? I think we covered that. There were lots of different strategies. We had somebody count up. We had somebody that subtracted. We had somebody that used division. Okay, let's look under the splats. How many are there? Six. Six. How many are there? Six. Six. Yes. They look like okay. So one thing that we can learn from this picture is what? We can learn that 16 took away um, 12 equals 4. 16 minus 12 equals 4. That's one thing we wow. can learn. Something else we could learn? That you can use division in um, these problems. Okay, so, so the, the division could be helpful. All right, here we go. Ready? So one of the things that I do in class is an activity called SPLAT. It's an activity I found online where the students have to identify the number of dots underneath certain SPLATs. And 
I've incorporated the discourse. You could do this with the students thinking on their own, but I think it's more powerful when the students have an opportunity to to work with a partner and to be able to use their talking stems with their partners in the way that they discuss the answers in the splats. My hope with the, this routine activity was that the students would be able to talk with each other so that they could learn from each other and the, the different strategies that they have to be able to solve a problem. And it, it goes across different routine activities. It's not only with the SPLAT activity, it's with other different activities that we do as well. You can see from the video that the students are engaged and it's like a game or a puzzle, something that they have to solve. And so when I develop or look for routine ideas in the classroom, I look for things like that where it's, it's like a game or a puzzle um, where they're having to try to solve something in a way that is different than solving a problem on a worksheet. I think probably the biggest challenge is for the students who have limited language abilities or have academic struggles, they are not always apt to, to speak or to be able to articulate their thinking and so having the opportunity to be able to work with another partner and listen to somebody else's thinking I think tries to address that challenge with the students, but I do see that sometimes they're reluctant to speak, and so that would be a challenge, I would say. So in this video, this was the fourth or fifth time this, this school year that we've done this activity in class, but we do so many other things throughout the day in other parts of our curriculum in the whole group lesson, in small group learning, in number talks, that they're used to the same kind of protocol or structure as far as classroom discourse. And so even though this was only the fourth or fifth time that they've done this specific activity, they still use the same kind of procedures in the way that they talk with each other. One of the things when you go to the website that has the splats, it has um, K2 activities and then it has um, activities that would be considered for like 3-5 activities. And so the K2 activities look at splats of 10 and they have one splat and so there might be six underneath the splat and four showing so they have to figure out how many there would be and there are also splats that have different colors so that the children have to do different things with the different activities that are on that website. For me, classroom discourse is a really powerful way for students to practice the eight mathematical practices in Common Core. And thinking about Math Practice 3, constructing a viable argument and critiquing the reasoning of others, there's no better way to practice that than through student discourse. And students can look at somebody else's work and be able to critique it and can use that critique to construct a viable argument for their own thinking. And in the PARC test, there's subclaims C and D that talk about being able to reason and to be able to model your thinking. And so I think any activity or routine or lesson that you do with students in your class that give them an opportunity to practice that makes them better mathematicians. smaller amount of talking that I can do and the more that I can listen to the kids learning I think that that makes me a better teacher and it makes the students stronger math students and more confident in their math abilities to be able to speak and have others listen to what they have to say.